All right, we're back with our trompe l'oeil. I want to start off with some bricks here, just to keep it real simple. These, um, these are just bricks with a little stencil here. And I've created a, a sort of a gray, a few steps darker in value than the background that we put down a minute ago. And I've also taken in a little tiny bit of this terracotta color here that made up the, the bricks and added some white to it to get this kind of peachy color here for the highlights. Now I've got my light coming this way. I've got my this 45 degree angle light that's going to be coming 45 degree angles up, kind of like how we have our stage lights. Now, of course, you can have your lights anywhere that makes sense for your scene, but we're going to keep it really simple and just keep that 45, 45 kind of key light action happening. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and take this brush right here and put a shadow, a cast shadow from this brick projecting off of the wall. So I'm going to actually put my shadow on the mortar down here, not on the brick itself. So if I drop that little gray tone down in here, I'm going to wrap it around the corner over here. And I'm making to make sure I don't go beyond the brick here because nothing is going to be able to cast that shadow. I don't want to start before the brick and I don't want to go, want to go past it. But that's a little shadow there. It looks like the brick is casting it down onto the surface of the wall behind it. So I'm not using straight up black, although you could. You might have a black shadow if it were a really bright, hot light. But I tend to find that a value or a, a tint and a, and a shade of the colors involved. So I'm using the gray here again on the mortar because I'm not actually shading the brick. I'm shading the, the shadows casting a shadow onto the mortar. So I've got the gray. So let's switch over to this other brush and some of this little peachy highlight on here. Remember again, our light's coming from this direction. So I might have a little bit of highlight kind of catching the edge of the brick. Now I am painting on the brick because any kind of highlight, there's not gonna be highlight above the brick. But if there's any light that the brick is catching, maybe the, the edge of the brick is a little warm, maybe there's a little bit of a crack in it somewhere there, uh, we're going to see that highlight on the brick. Now be real careful to not to add too much. Oftentimes you, you can get away with no highlights at all on a very matte surface. So our brick here doesn't need a lot. If I can't come in and do a, uh, an L shape like this in the same direction going the other way, it's going to look like the brick has snow on it or something. So we want to keep just a little bit. Again, it doesn't have to be just on the top of the brick. I can also suggest that, okay, maybe there's a little a little kind of a, a scar down, running down the middle of the brick here. I can bring in my shadow as well in some other spot here. Maybe suggest that there's some little bit of the brick that is kind of broken off there. Let me just dampen that down a little bit. So you can do all sorts of interesting shapes with that. Let me show you another thing, too, with some of these other bricks. If I take this brick next to it, and I get a very fine shadow line on here. I just want to come in here and I'm just going to do a little tiny bit. That's going to make this brick look like the brick is pretty set deep into the mortar. It's not really projecting off the wall at all. So if I jump down to this brick right here and I give myself a nice big shadow line, and then I come around the corner here, this is looking like this brick, I hope it looks like that to you, that this brick is projecting farther away from the wall than this one is. The length of the shadow is going to have a lot to do with uh, how far the object is away from what the shadow is being cast on. So if I could even like exaggerate this even farther and make this brick sort of ridiculously far out of the wall, farther away than a brick would normally be, sort of wrap that around the corner. Now we've got this brick that's sticking way away from the wall here and this one that's barely set into the wall. Let's go back over here to our little fleur de lis here and sort of carry this theme on. This is kind of a small stencil, so I'm gonna cheat and go in with some smaller brushes. I wanna make it look like this half of this little flower in here has uh, a little sharp ridge down the middle of it. So I'm gonna use the same shade pattern here. I'm just gonna go ahead and outline the outside of my little petal. But then I'm gonna run a little vertical stripe right down the middle and I'm gonna keep it pretty hard edge there because I want to make it look like the transition from one side of this shape to the other is very quick. I'm going to reach over here and grab some water. Water can really be your friend when you're doing this. Just going to kind of blend this in a little bit here, soften that up so it doesn't look quite so brushy. So you can see there that it looks like, especially when I throw on some highlight onto this, I'll switch over to this brush, slightly higher value. And I'll just throw it on this side of this little petal here. And you can see that that's, that's suggesting that this side is tipped toward the light, where our light's coming from over here, and that this side is tipping away from the light, but that there's a hard ridge. It goes, it goes from this plane to this plane very abruptly. 
Well, what if I want to suggest that this leaf over here is a little bit more rounded? Well, I can do the same thing, but I can use a little bit of water to help me. It's going to start with this highlight on here. Get a little more paint than that. Come over here and grab this little highlight. Now, this little sharp edge that I got going on here is suggesting that that's really hard. So let me get some paint off of this brush and soften this edge with just some water. I'm just going to come in here and whoops, bump the camera. And then I'm going to come in and just bust this up a little bit. So you can see that that edge there is not quite as hard as it was a second ago. This might be easier to see with the shade. I'm just going to dip my same brush. Do the exact same thing on the other side here. I'm going to come in here and give myself this little cast shadow. And remember, it's going to switch over to this side. Remember, the light's coming from this way. So I don't want that hard edge there. So I'm going to rinse this out. In fact, this brush is pretty sloppy right now. Let me grab here. Reach way over here. Grab this little highlight brush I was using. And I'm just going to come in here and gently soften. Here's that sort of stippling action I was talking about where you're going to use stippling as a as a technique, not as something that you're going to sit down and stipple a whole area. I'm just breaking up that little south, southern edge there to make it look like it isn't quite so hard. And that's giving us the suggestion here that this little flare de lis shape has a gentler round of this still a little, little edge there. You can see it, but it's not quite as sharp as that one. I can continue to go around the rest of this little shape and, and suggest that this guy is got a little shadow under there. This guy's throwing a little shadow here. Don't really need that stencil much at all. I was just kind of using that little gray on the stencil to sort of see what I was doing with this. And again, you can kind of keep this up. I can start in. I have a little, a little cup of black over here somewhere. Let me do a little bit of a cut line on this. This is awfully small to need a cut line, but I'll, I'll try it in anyway and we'll see how this works. Come in here and just get a little line very delicate little edge there where sort of the deepest shadow is happening a little bit over here it's kind of a lot that's kind of helping us sort of see that shape coming out of the rest of the ornament so again we can kind of keep going through this go back in and add those missing highlights that are in there this is going to give you a very simple suggestion of like how this trompe l'oeil works so now you can really see with those cut lines and with the initial steps here in the highlight and shadow that there is the suggestion that this is projecting off of the wall of course you can then you can also come in with a little bit of sort of white highlight too on a few spots maybe we want to suggest that the light is coming right over here I want to pick up a little hot spot right there maybe a little bit here on this edge right there a little gleam these little extra touches that can kind of help a lot I haven't even added the, the first highlight over here on this side but we'll add the hot highlight out of there as well so again, uh, it's sort of quick and dirty, but you can sort of see this building up here. It's not quite done, but continuing adding these highlights and softening in these shadows, and we can see what, what was just something that looked like a flat stencil starting to lift off of the surface. Again, something even as simple as a brick stencil can give some dimension with a real simple trompe l'oeil. You can carry this into much more sophisticated shapes, but this is kind of the basic steps. This uh, highlight and the shade and a cast shadow like over here a cut line and then uh, getting the difference between the abruptness of a line and a gentle transition of a line to suggest something that is a little more rounded as opposed to something that has a real sharp crease in it so hopefully that'll get you started on playing around with some basic trompe l'oeil